welcome to my show. This series is entitled, How to Be a Better Teacher and or Entertainer, because if you're a teacher, you are an entertainer, and if you are an entertainer, you are also a teacher. So, today we're going to talk about how to make puppets and ventriloquist figures. The ones we're talking about today are polyfoam cloth-covered puppets. Let, let's go to the workshop and see what we're doing. Well, first of all, we start with polyfoam. And this is the half-inch size, which is, very, which is very hard to find. The half-inch size, um, you could be able to find it maybe at a carpet layers or a upholster. But more prevalent is the one-inch kind. And, and they have the one-inch kind that they use on mattresses. For example, this big roll that I have right here. And you can get it at the Sears catalog, one-inch and uh, two-inch. And you can get it the two-inch kind from Penny's catalog. You also might like to try the different department stores and various other places where they have foam. But as I said, the carpet layers or for sure have that have it and the upholsters have it too. But what do we do with these pieces of foam? Well, first of all, we need to really assemble all the different things that we're going to be using. So you may want to tape record uh, what I'm doing today. If you've got a VCR, you may want to copy it because um, I'm going to tell you in a minute that I'm going to offer you for free my copy of uh, how to make the head and the different parts of the body, but they, they're just my copies of um, how I make my puppets. There aren't any instructions on it, so you want if you want to take notes or, like I say, um, turn on your VCR, and uh, so you'll know what to do later on. If you are interested in the pattern that I'm talking about, um, send a double-stamped business size self-addressed envelope to Barbara Dewey, 731 North State, Alma, Michigan, 48801. Well, um, first of all, you're going to need, well, you need a ruler, and you're going to need some Bristol board, you're going to need some newspaper or something to cover the work area. You'll need um, velour. Now, there are different kinds of velour. Um, you can use cherry cloth. There, um, there's, for normal people type puppets, you'd use, say, pink or tan, or um, for an oriental would be, you know, pale yellow. Um, there, use your own judgment when you pick up the material. Now, if it's a non-person um, puppet, you know, say it's an animal, you'd want to have fake fur or the furry kind of um, fur that you find in a, in a fabric store. Um, let me see, a hot glue gun or contact cement. Now, this is what originally I used, contact cement, before the hot glue guns became popular. And it's a lot harder, believe me, because it takes a long time for contact cement to stick. But the hot glue guns, now first, about 10 years ago, you can see how well worn this hot glue gun is. I got this first hot glue gun when they first came out, and I liked it a lot, but I always burnt my fingers. And um, now, just this couple weeks ago at um, Walmart, I got a crafty, it's called Crafty Magic Melt Low Temperature Hot Glue Gun that I really like. Now it still burns a little bit, but it's not like, oh, it's just like kind of like, you know, it was hot. And I keep this in a pan or on a dish and uh, get the glue sticks that way. All right. You need straight pins and you'll need um, safety pins. My puppets, I always would say, if you use a magnet on my puppets, they'll fall apart because I've always used so many safety pins because I switch heads on them all the time, different parts of the body, but you know, I keep a big basket of different kinds of safety pins and another basket of different sized needles and a needle threader as I'm getting older and can't thread needles. T-pins are a mainstay, um, holding shoes on, and, uh, and then straight pins. Um, anything that you you use for sewing. Now you don't have to be a seamstress to do this, but um, if you can sew a straight stitch, I suppose you wouldn't even have to use a sewing machine if you didn't want to, because you could 
sew it by hand, it would take a lot longer. So let me show you. You can use one inch foam and you can use half inch foam. Now, the half inch foam would make a smaller puppet, like this one, and the inch foam would make a larger puppet, like this one. Different steps that I'm going to be showing you as we make them. Now, first of all, you're going to need to, oh, a felt tip pen. And you take your foam. Let's see. I've got a half inch piece here. Now, this, remember the pattern that I told you that I would send you for free. And uh, you cut that pattern out and you put it on the foam um, after you've cut it out. You see. And you dot all around it. You don't want to draw a straight line because it would smear later on. So you dot around it. Then take your nice sharp scissors and cut it out. And I'll show you um, what it looks like. Now these are inch size pieces that I've made because they make a bigger puppet and that's what I'm, I like to do. Now when I first started making puppets, and this is what this picture is here. Um, all of these puppets probably ten years ago were my puppets and the pattern, the head pattern were, was a little bit smaller but I like the bigger size. I didn't line them. That was my point. I didn't line them and the foam, if you have a cushion or a pillow uh, that doesn't have a cover on it, then you'll know that, that very soon it rots. That's why you can see some of these like this is an older puppet and this is a brand new one because the, as they get older they age. So I've discovered that it's a lot better if you line them. So I just get some old sheeting or some old muslin or old material or new material even and line the other side. Cut it out again, take a hot glue gun and line it. You don't have to do it but your puppets will last a lot longer. Your ventriloquist figures will last a lot longer. Okay, that's the first step, cutting those out. Now this is a little dart here that makes the head round. So you take your hot glue gun and spread it on and then hold it together like that until it sits. sets. Now this back here you don't want to close up because that is the part that makes the head, gives the head space. And this is the mouth. You have to be careful. I've done a lot of workshops and people, you have to be careful they don't glue the mouth shut and leave this part for the opening. So be careful that you glue the right spot together. Now, we have to glue these edges together. Let's see. Like that. Take the hot glue gun. Fill it all in. And you'll have to hold it for a while. Hold it tight, like that. Two miles in the opposite direction. On the inside, you have your lining. And then we do the same thing all the way around. And that is already glued shut. And then the same thing in the front. Don't glue the mouth shut. The same thing in the front, chin to chin, and then the front. And it will look like this one, all glued together, see? All the way around. Now, we have to have a mouth. 